Hey, welcome. Grandma Honey here, and I have part two of Nicholas and his neighbors. All right, let's get started. Now, when we left off, Ned had just encountered three thieves who beat him badly and stole all of the hundreds of dog biscuits that he had and left him unconscious on the road. Coming down the Poochville Highway was a terrier by the name of Dr. Scotty. He was a talented doctor who specialized in treating common dog ailments like fleas around the collar, crooked tail, or dry nose. Today, Dr. Scotty was on his way to Poochville to perform an operation on a Labrador who'd stepped on his own tongue. As Dr. Scotty rounded the bend, he was surprised to see a dog lying battered and bruised beside the highway. Well, I'll be a leprechaun, he exclaimed. There's something lying in the road up ahead. And carefully, he moved in for a closer look. Why, I do believe it's a dog. A boxer, in fact. And he said, he stared at Ned. He said, but my, huh, he doesn't appear to be well at all. I better not get too close. I wouldn't want to catch anything. And retreating to the opposite side of the road, Dr. Scotty wondered what he should do. I, I suppose I should help him, he thought aloud. But... My, look at the time. I'm already running late for my operation. <laughs> Perhaps I'll send my nurse back to tend him. Yes, that's what I'll do. So Dr. Scotty continued on his way towards Poochville, leaving Ned lying hurt on the side of the road. But as he walked on down the highway, he quickly forgot all about the injured boxer. And by the time he reached Poochville, Dr. Scotty didn't even remember to send the nurse. Sometime later, another traveler came along. It was Prissy Hynose, a poodle from a wealthy family who was on her way to a prestigious dog show. Prissy's limousine had had a flat tire, and she had decided to go on ahead while her chauffeur attended to it. All decked out in an outfit which showed off her naturally curly hair, she hurried along so as not to miss the show. And rounding the bend in the road, she spotted Ned. Oh my, how dreadful, Prissy exclaimed. Oh, some poor creature has fallen by the roadside. I suppose someone should help him, but I surely wouldn't want to get all messed up. <laughs> I wouldn't want to die if I soiled my new outfit. And standing across the road, the snooty pooch looked over at Ned. <laughs> he does appear to need assistance, she said thoughtfully. <laughs> but there's a chance that he's simply pretending to be hurt in order to draw me to his side. <laughs> it's quite possible that he's a thief waiting to steal my valuables. <gasps> the cad! I simply won't fall for his trickery. And she lifted her nose high into the air. How distasteful. I knew I should have waited for my chauffeur. Huh. My chauffeur Smedley was going to escort me to the show in the limousine. And as she continued down the road, she never thought of the injured dog again. It was late afternoon when the overall clad traveler pushing his old cart finally happened down the road. It was Nicholas the cat. And by now he was over halfway to the family reunion and was getting more excited with each step. And as he walked along, anticipating all the fun he would have, he made up a song. Oh, what a jolly, joyful time as we meet and hug and dine, telling stories and playing games, trying to remember auntie's names, uncles, grandpas, brothers, cousins. Ah, oh, they'll be relatives by the dozens, clasping paws and swapping tails, sharing love that never fails. And as his cart slowly rounded the bend in the road, Nicholas saw the large dog lying in the ditch up ahead. <gasps> Uh-oh, 
thieves hereabout, he said wearily. That unfortunate dog must have fallen prey to them. I wonder, should I stop for him? It will be dark soon, and this highway is certainly not a place for the cat to be at night. And it would make me miss my family reunion. Besides, there's always a chance that this is some sort of a trap, he thought aloud, peering into the bushes. Perhaps this dog plans to rob me. And then Nicholas shook his head. No, those are silly excuses. This poor animal needs my help. Besides, it's the sort of thing I've heard good King Le Leonard would do. And leaning over the injured dog, Nicholas suddenly recognized him. <gasps> Why, it's Ned, he yelped. A and he's been robbed. Oh, let's see. I can use my bandana as a bandage, and I have a little milk. I was saving it for dinner, but Ned needs it much more than I do. And Nicholas carefully bandaged Ned's wounds and put drops of milk on his dry tongue. And after straining to load him onto his cart, he summoned all of his strength to continue pushing the cart down the road. Fortunately, it wasn't long before they reached the dog tired in and Nicholas parked his cart. Excuse me, he called out, ringing the bell at the front desk. Hello, is anyone there? Yes, yes, I'm coming, a voice replied from the back room. Keep your fur on. An elderly beagle waddled out and jumped up to the desk. Now, he said, cleaning his spectacles, what can I do for you? Could I please rent a room, sir? Nicholas asked politely. The beagle sniffed and adjusted his glasses before responding. Very well. And your name? He asked, looking up at Nicholas for the first time. Oh, oh my, he said. Well, is something wrong, sir? Nicholas asked. Wrong? Well, well, well it, it's just that, um, well, we don't get many, uh, I mean, you're a, a, a cat. Yes, I know. Well, it, it doesn't make any difference to me, mind you, but, um, the beagle paused, pointing to the sign near the door. No cats allowed, Nicholas read aloud. Oh, I, I see, but sir, um, I desperately need a room for the night. You see, I have a hurt dog outside in my cart. A hurt dog? The clerk asked, glancing out the window. Well, then that changes things, doesn't it? Have you any biscuits? Biscuits? Nicholas questions. Yes, dog biscuits, you know, money, he, he explained. Oh, um, no, sir, not a one. But I do have fresh vegetables, though. Hmm, well, this is highly irregular, the beagle said, kind of rubbing his jowls. But perhaps we can work something out. Nicholas finally convinced the innkeeper to give him a room and then helped Ned into bed. The injured boxer was unconscious through the rest of the afternoon and then into the night, too. And it wasn't until late the next morning that he came to. Oh, where am I? He grumbled groggily, wiping his eyes with his paws. Oh, what's going on? Boy, am I glad to see you're awake, Nicholas said brightly. You miss breakfast, but here's your lunch, he said, handing Ned a tray full of food. What are you doing here? Ned asked in surprise, rising up from the bed. Ouch! Oh, my head! What happened? Oh, I'm afraid you were robbed, Ned, Nicholas said sadly. Oh, I've got to get to that convention, the dog said, trying to stand. But he fell back right onto the bed. Well, you're not going anywhere for a few days, Nicholas said. Oh, how did I get here? Ned groaned. Why are you here? 
Nicholas pulled up a chair next to Ned's bed. Well, I was on my way to a park near Pussy Willow for a family reunion and I found you lying beside the road. You, you mean you helped me? Nicholas nodded. But what about all the mean things I've done to you? I mean, trying to run you out of Pupland and barking at you and pestering you? Well, we're still neighbors, Nicholas said, fiddling with his whiskers. I mean, even if we don't always get along. Neighbors, huh? Ned grunted. I'm not exactly fond of cats, but <clears throat> you helped me. And you're welcome, Nicholas said. Now, eat your lunch before it gets cold. I've got to get back to my farm, and I have crops to tend to. Um, you rest up, and I'll be back to check on you in a few days. Nicholas paid the innkeeper with the produce from his cart and asked him to take good care of Ned. And as he pushed his now-empty cart down the Poochville Highway, a kitten-like smile crossed his face. It wasn't long before he began to sing. A few days later, Nicholas went back to check on Ned. The boxer was doing much better, and he felt well enough to return home. Nicholas invited Ned to stay at his barn until he was strong enough to return to his job as sheriff of Pupland. Ned agreed. And in the coming days, the two very different animals became friends. And when Ned did return to work, he was a changed dog. He still wore his blue hat and his sharp blue uniform, which showed off his muscles. And he still strutted around the town with a shiny gold star on his chest and made sure that no one broke the law. But each Friday, when he heard someone singing and saw the overall clad figure rolling his cart full of vegetables down the cobblestone street, he didn't, he didn't leap up to block the path, but instead he rose and cleared the way for the farmer cat. Make way, you dogs, he would yell. And when Nicholas had brought his cart to a halt in the village square, Ned would announce his arrival. Gather round, town dogs. Come and see the fine vegetables of our neighbor, Nicholas the cat. The end. And that's our story for today and, and last week. Nicholas and his neighbors. Bye-bye for now. Be blessed.